Elvis Presley pretty much stole Priscilla's life at the age of 14. She was only a child when he took her innocence and controlled everything. He controlled how she did her hair and how to color it. He forced her to change her teeth and to wear clothes to match his. At one point, he even got physically violent with her. And then once Priscilla gave birth to their child, he no longer wanted her. That's because Elvis Presley was attracted to innocence and virginity, not mothers. So let's get into it. So from the beginning, there were red flags in Elvis and Priscilla's relationship because they met when Priscilla was so young. Elvis was born in 1935 and Priscilla was born in 1945. So he was a full decade older than her and he met her when she was only 14. You were 14 years old. Elvis was 24, right? Mm -hmm. How did your parents allow a 14 year old teenager baby to be with this then superstar of Elvis was a rock star, and during his stardom, he was linked to Priscilla, and she became a big part of her story. This allowed Priscilla to develop a reputation of her own. But even back in the 50s and 60s, people still found their relationship inappropriate. I mean, Elvis met Priscilla when she was in the ninth grade. I've seen a few different articles cite different dates of when Elvis and Priscilla first met, but I believe it was sometime in September of 1959. Priscilla was wearing a navy and white sailor dress. She met up with Elvis and she told him that she's in the ninth grade, but that didn't stop him there. He ended up playing a few different songs for Priscilla to impress her and that's what started their relationship. Well, your father was stationed in Germany. My father was stationed in Wiesbaden. How'd you meet him? Um, a personal, a personal friend or a friend of his met me at the Eagles Club in Wiesbaden. That's where a lot of the military men went to entertainment and had their dinners. Were you attracted like right away? Um, you know, I didn't know what attraction what was at 14. I mean, I liked him and he teased me and I thought, you know, he was nice, but then he started teasing me about my nose and I didn't like him and then, and then he came back and started laughing and then he played the piano and then he's so enduring. You could, he had such charisma. In that clip, Priscilla shared that her father was in the Air Force and he traveled all around, but that was actually her stepfather. Her biological father passed away when she was only a few months old, so pretty much this man named Paul raised her. The family ended up stationed in Germany, and that's where Priscilla would go on to meet Elvis. At this point, Elvis was in a vulnerable place because his mother had just recently passed away, and he felt like Priscilla resembled his mother. He was quoted saying that she was young enough that I can train her any way I want. And it kind of seems like Elvis had an interesting relationship with his mother because there are reports that they would speak like and baby talk to each other. Elvis was attracted to women who reminded him of his mother, Gladys. The two had been very close. Allegedly, they would speak in baby talk to each other even when Elvis was a grown adult. And it was not long after Gladys' death that Elvis met Priscilla. You'll see throughout this video that Elvis has an interest in purity and virginity and, like, youthfulness, which is a red flag in itself. But nonetheless, in 1959, Priscilla and her family moved to Germany. She was out one day with her younger brother, and a service member approached Priscilla and asked her if she would like to accompany him and his wife to meet Elvis. At this point, her father was like, mm, hold up, like, this is a 14-year-old girl, and he later approved. This would work out nicely for Priscilla, and throughout their relationship, they lived near each other other, which was convenient because she was a minor. Back in Tennessee, he had a home called Graceland, and reportedly Priscilla's parents had a home just a mile away. So it was easy for Elvis to call up Priscilla and tell her to get ready to hang out. But Elvis did ask you back, and you saw him again and again. And you would get home very late at night and be exhausted the next day when you had to go to school. Mm -hmm. And your parents let you go again and again. It's, 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 you know, when you're in love, it's hard to fight. And I was rebellious somewhat, meaning I, I, um, I didn't want to go to school or I said I wouldn't go to school. Please let me, you know, he'd be out of my life after six months and, um, you know, don't ruin my life because I really cared. And he came to the house and he was charming. He was wonderful. And my family had a lot of faith in him. 
So Priscilla and Elvis hit it off right away, but her parents were concerned because he's, again, a 24-year-old man interested in their young teenage daughter. She wrote for people. Gradually, a pattern developed. Elvis would call after 7 to let me know that I'd be picked up at 8. I had to dress quickly, trying to find some way to appear older than my age. At times, I'd borrow my mother's clothes and hope everyone would assume that I was at least 16. After Elvis and Priscilla went on four dates, her parents were like, what's up? We need to meet this man. And Priscilla's father asked Elvis, what do you want with my young daughter? And Elvis said that he happened to be very fond of her and that she's a lot more mature than her age. Priscilla's parents bought this because Elvis was a charming man. But in hindsight, it looks like Elvis was fixated on molding Priscilla into whoever he wanted her to be, training her to become his ideal woman. And he was successful, but this took time, and it's clear that there was some grooming going on in this relationship, which if you guys don't know what grooming is, it's pretty much the act of an adult manipulating a minor to prepare them for a relationship or even, you know, getting intimate before they are a mature adult. So to keep their relationship on the low, they hung out in private. They couldn't go in public because Priscilla's an actual child, but Priscilla actually wanted to go all the way with Elvis. I mean, at this point, she was about 16 years old. He was going to be leaving Germany because he was in the army, and he actually told her no. He said, someday we will, Priscilla, but not now. You're just too young. You guys might be thinking, well, shoot, Elvis did the right thing by not sleeping with that minor. But don't get ahead of yourself because instead of going all the way, Elvis would teach Priscilla different things to please him. Like, I guess, I don't know. Sounds kind of kinky, but they had a strong connection. Much of it was sexual, and they would create some scenarios to make things exciting. But Priscilla was still a kid, and she was in school, and she started to struggle with her classes because Elvis was her world. So he actually introduced her to some drugs to help her stay awake. By March 1960, Elvis was pretty much finishing up with his time in Germany, but Priscilla was still there. So Elvis left Germany and Priscilla sent him a bunch of love letters. She would send them in bright pink envelopes so that he would be able to locate them among all the fan mail. There's actually a rumor out there that Priscilla didn't send one every day because he did get one every single day, but she wrote a bunch ahead of time and gave it to his manager or some sort of person that would later on pass off the mail to him. So um, it was an interesting, like, trick that she used to make sure she was still in Elvis's mind even though he was no longer in Germany around her. By 1962, Priscilla was still in high school and she was stuck in Germany, but she wanted to leave Germany so badly to be with Elvis, so her parents and Elvis's parents made up a plan to send her to America and have her go to a good school so she could be around Elvis. She's still a teenager at this point, she has no idea who she is, and and she's pretty much giving up her teenage years to go and be with this man. Presley and Bolio families came to an arrangement. Priscilla would live in Memphis with Elvis's parents rather than him, and she'd attend a good school. Eventually, when Priscilla had graduated and was old enough, she would become the rock star's wife. Because Elvis is such a superstar, we know a lot about his relationship with Priscilla. And even though she did move to the States, supposedly at this point, they still hadn't done it. I have a theory on why I feel like they waited to get intimate, and I'll explain that later on in this video, but Elvis took his time with Priscilla. And honestly, Priscilla was obsessed with him, which is a big part of grooming. I mean, she would not take her eyes off of him. She would walk right next to him all the time, stay in his vicinity while he's brushing his teeth, getting ready. She was right there next to him. She would claim she did this because she loved him and she wanted to take care of him. But personally, I feel like she was just attached to him at the hip because she was so scared of losing him, especially when he was such a big superstar and so many women wanted him. As Elvis became more famous, he would go and shoot movies and Priscilla would be stuck at home. People referred to to her as his live-in Lolita. 
Elvis had a controlling manager at this point named Tom Parker, and he was actually worried that Elvis wouldn't marry Priscilla, and it would look really bad publicly because they had been together for so long and she's so young. So right before Christmas in 1966, Elvis proposed to Priscilla. And even though Elvis did feel pressured to marry Priscilla, they ended up getting married in May 1967, so about five months after getting proposed to. So the first time that Priscilla and Elvis went all the way was on their wedding night, and Priscilla got pregnant literally right away. Like, she had a baby exactly nine months later, so she could have gotten pregnant on her wedding night. I don't think Elvis was thinking this through because he was really worried about having a child and how this would affect his career. When Priscilla was seven months pregnant, he asked for a trial separation in their relationship and they were only apart for a short time. Their daughter, Lisa Marie, was born on February 1st, 1968. Priscilla must have felt a ton of pressure because she just gave birth to this child that they didn't necessarily want or at least Elvis did not want and he had a thriving career and he wanted to go and work and become the superstar that he is and Priscilla wanted to be a part of that. So Priscilla would accompany Elvis and she started adapting to his lifestyle. She would take some Adderall and some sleeping pills to keep up with Elvis's schedule because he would be up at night and sleep during the day. And at this point in their relationship, Elvis really started to mold Priscilla. He requested that Priscilla would switch up her hair, she would dye it darker, and style it in a certain way. He also wanted her to wear a lot of makeup. Priscilla was under a ton of pressure and Elvis was pretty much training her to become his perfect wife. You wrote, Elvis controlled your looks, your clothes, your hair, your makeup. He controlled you totally. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. I was definitely under a, a spell of, um, of what I thought was love. And I... I had to take responsibility for that, too. But you were 16, 17 years old. But what did I know? I knew nothing else. I had nothing else. I had, I had no experience, not even in life, but with other people. Elvis continued to remake Priscilla, who later described herself as Elvis's living doll, to the fashion that he pleased, to the teeth that she had in her head. I mean, he actually had porcelain caps placed over her teeth, and he demanded that she improved her posture. She actually started to look like Elvis. Her hair was bigger, her hair was dark, and she started wearing similar colors to him. During this time, Elvis began telling Priscilla what she should wear. She wrote in the second part of her people piece, he liked me in red, blue, turquoise, emerald green, and black and white, the same colors he himself wore. He hated browns and dark green, colors he inextricably associated in his mind with the army. So Priscilla was trying to become this perfect woman for Elvis, and she tried her best, but it really never was enough. And there were points where Elvis would lash out and get physical with Priscilla. Sometimes when he was irrational, he did hurt you. He once gave you a black eye. He once threw a chair at you. Mm. You didn't like something he sang. No. And he threw a chair at you. And then it had records on it, and the records went all over the place. So once Elvis and Priscilla became married and had their child, Lisa Marie, their relationship went downhill. The couple seemed happy on the outside, but their marriage was a bit turbulent behind the scenes. After Priscilla gave birth to their daughter, she started to notice that Elvis wasn't really that into her anymore. Priscilla recalls that Elvis said before they were married that he had never been able to make love to a woman who had had a child. So he was no longer intimate with her because he wasn't attracted to a woman who's a mother, which is an interesting thought process. And here you have this beautiful baby. And now you find, as you write, now you find that your husband doesn't want to go to bed with you. Yes. Elvis had a hard time dealing with mother and the little girl that I was to him. And that's, I didn't know it then, but that's how I found and realized in later years. But he was a father to me. He was, he was my um, mentor. I, he, to, to show any kind of vulnerability and security to me was not macho, was not something that he felt I should see. So our communication was horrible. 
Okay, whoa, let's back it up a little bit. So we already know that this relationship is pretty much wrong because it started when she was a young teenager and that's not okay. And I think that it started when she was a young teenager, not because they just magically clicked, but I do think Elvis is attracted to youth. Priscilla has shared that Elvis liked that Priscilla was young and inexperienced. This article writes, Elvis valued what he saw as Priscilla's purity, so their relationship remained sexless. But they were intimate in other ways. One of their favorite pastimes was using Polaroids to document intimate games like, like where um, Priscilla would play teacher and seduce Elvis, the student. So they would get freaky with role play, but wouldn't go all the way because Elvis cared about Priscilla's purity. In his past, he said that he wanted a virgin. Yet, you also write that you and Elvis took dozens and dozens of Polaroid pictures acting out your fantasies. All different kinds of fantasies. You learned to turn him on sexually, even though you never had intercourse. You did say that. This makes me think about the relationship that Elvis had with his own mother, that they would speak baby talk to each other, and it just seemed a little bit weird. And it's just weird how he's so fascinated with virginity and innocence and all of that. He was far from a pure man. He constantly cheated on Priscilla and had affairs throughout their relationship. At one point, Elvis had a public relationship with his co-star and Margaret while he was married to Priscilla. For the 1964 musical movie, Viva Las Vegas, Elvis's co-star was the pretty actress Anne Margaret. The media began reporting that the two of them had become very close, and Priscilla was suspicious. However, Elvis insisted that there was nothing going on. Priscilla endured the rumors until a newspaper reported that Elvis and Anne Margaret were engaged. Although filming on Viva Las Vegas was already finished, the on-screen couple were still being spotted out and about together. Elvis was angry, but Priscilla was so furious that she threw a vase at the wall, smashing it. At first, Priscilla didn't sit back and take it. She confronted Elvis and asked him, what's up? And he pretty much told her, are you going to be, you know, my wife and comply with my behavior? Because, you know, he's Elvis. He's like the king of rock or whatever. He can do whatever he wants. And pretty much she ultimately complied with his desire to do whatever he wants. According to Priscilla in the People piece, in response, Elvis then hurled her onto the bed. I want a woman who's going to understand that things like this might just happen. Are you going to be her or not? And it seemed that, despite everything, she was. So Priscilla wasn't getting intimate with Elvis, and he was just cheating on her. So she went on and did her own thing. She had an affair with a man named Mike Stone, who was her karate instructor. So she had an affair with her karate instructor. And when she told Elvis that she was leaving him and he found out about the affair, he wanted to hire a hitman to pretty much take out Mike Stone. So could you imagine being the guy who Elvis wanted to hire a hitman on? I mean, he was a karate instructor, so he may have been able to defend himself. But as the years went on, their relationship continued to become more and more toxic. Elvis started to develop addiction issues, and Priscilla realized that they couldn't go any further. So after five years of marriage, it was over. Their divorce was finalized in October 1973, and it was amicable. I mean, they still loved each other, and even Priscilla claims that she didn't divorce him because she didn't love him. Him. She just, you know, she was with him her entire life. She needed to go and figure out who she was. That I and I did not divorce him because I didn't love him. He was the love of my life, truly. If anything, I left because, and I still loved him. I needed to find out what the world was like. Really, it was one world. But what the greatest thing about our relationship is that we still loved each other. And I do believe they loved each other. They continued to see each other and share custody of Lisa after their divorce. And after learning that Elvis passed away in August 1977, Priscilla was devastated. She wrote in her book, Elvis and Me, that she wanted to die. Since Elvis's death, she has been able to make a career off of their relationship, which some people they looked down on, but at the same time, it was her life and she lived it. So she has done tons of press tours for her book. She has done a ton of interviews and 
She had a great life after Elvis, and it seems like she had a decent life with him, but there were definitely some disgusting parts. I mean, the fact that she was with him from such a young age is a huge red flag and honestly criminal. I mean, grooming is criminal. And then throughout their relationship, she never really had a, a self-identity. She was whoever he wanted her to be. So I guess, honestly, she had a pretty rough time with him because, I mean, the way that she looked, the drugs that she was feeding him, uh, her teeth, I mean, there was so much to it. And then once she goes through having his child, he just no longer is attracted to her that's something that i feel like would be devastating as a mother so i need you guys to leave a comment below what you think of all of this situation do you feel bad for priscilla i mean i definitely feel bad for her how couldn't you she was just a teenager but at the same time there's something when it comes to elvis's life that i just want to understand more because i feel like he had some inappropriate relationship with his mother maybe and I don't know. I feel like it's some type of cycle. Also, I love the movie Walk the Line. I think that's like, oh no, that's about Johnny Cash. <laughs> oh my gosh, over here trying to cancel myself. Okay, sorry. I'm just like, I've been listening to a lot of like Johnny Cash lately, but I should be listening to Elvis. Anyways, okay, let's go ahead and open this package. It's from Lang Upside Down Wear, I think. Um, and it looks like it's from California, which I will be there very soon. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is so cute. Hold up, letter. Hi Sloan, my name is Sarah. I am a small business owner. I do custom embroidery and I have been doing it for the last year, around the time I found your channel. I remember wanting to find more about Britney Spears' conservatorship and your video popped up. You have such an amazing way with your words. Thank you for being so passionate about what you do. Those items I threw in are custom made for you. I really hope you love, love them. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I look forward to sending you many things in the future. You are so nice. Oh my gosh. P.S. I'm writing this while I'm watching one of your videos. That is so sweet. If your subscribers would like to buy something, they can use your, your code Sloan for money off on laying upside down where on Instagram and layingupsidedownwear.com. <gasps> I'm so excited. I really want embroidery merch. And like, I've been working with this one company, but this one company is like not giving what I really wanted to give. So maybe I should talk to you, girl. Let's go ahead and look. So they've got some like really professional cards right here. Love that. And then we've got, <gasps> look at this sweater. Oh my gosh. It says Tigger on it, which I have a literal like um, sweatshirt. Does it normally have two G's in it though? Cute. Oh my gosh. I love the color too. It's so like, this is like retro vibes. I love this. Like very like giving me nineties. Um, and then we've got, oh my gosh, you give me hats. <gasps> that is so nice. So this one looks like it says LA, but upside down, which, oh my gosh, this would be so cute in LA. <gasps> Stop. I love this hat. These hats are so nice. Have a good day. These hats are so cute. Oh my gosh. They're both coming with me. I love these hats. <gasps> Look at that. This one is like so smooth looking. It just like looks like chocolate. And then, um, so good. Sorry, I did not mean to throw it on the ground. It's just, I don't have a lot of space right here. And then we've got this one right here, the Spider-Man one. <gasps> wow, uh, look at that Spider-Man. It is so hip and like, it looks so like, you know, like not like from a target. You can tell this is like very custom very well done wow i am so impressed by your company congrats i cannot wait oh my gosh and you're in los angeles maybe we can meet up i'm like looking did you leave your phone number is that a phone number right there anyways i'll be in los angeles like starting saturday so thank you so much for these i love them and i can't wait to check out your other stuff thank you so much and i'll see you guys soon bye guys